When you will come home exhausted, I should be here to tend to your needs. She proudly said, her lips curved into a smile. Wait, let me get this straight. You, a 23 years old woman, is staying jobless because she married a rich guy who can handle all her expenses. He harshly stated without caring about the servants watching them. Wayne's brows got knitted together as she didn't expect his this reaction. Taeyang Shi. He was telling me you a grown woman is staying at home because she have to take care of her grown husband who still yesterday was living comfortably without her help. You were telling me you want to stay at home to take care of your husband wasting your youth when he only stays at home during nights and there are numerous servants keep this mansion neat and clean. Taeyang Shi We don't even have any children yet, Vyan, that you are raving about taking care of. I have numerous servants to do daily housework too. From cooking to cleaning to gardening, everything. So what wifely responsibilities you are talking about, for which you need to be at home 24-7? Cause as far as I remember, I am managing to look after these servants while doing my work all these years. Oh, how can I forget? You must be referring to your duty as a wife to warm my bed, right? Yeah, how can I forget? That's a big responsibility. You need to be fresh always for me. Who knows when I am in mood? Wayne's eyes widen and her cheeks become red, not due to shyness but due to embarrassment. She couldn't understand why her newly wedded husband was insulting her like this in front of everyone. Didn't she say it? what she was supposed to say then why was he angry you know what it's good keep this up after all who would refuse a 24/7 bed warmer a gap left her mouth not only hers but also the servants too a bed warmer a whisper like sound left her mouth as her eyes become glossy Yes, that too a gold digging one. My goodness, such a clever woman you are, marrying a rich man so that you need to only warm his bed to enjoy his luxurious life. I am impressed. Saying this, he got up from his chair and left from there. She stood there motionless as his words rang in her mind repeatedly. Gold digging bed warmer. Wayne's cheeks were still warm with the sting of humiliation as Thiang's harsh words echoed in her ears. She felt small. Her timid nature magnified under the weight of his drawn. The servant's eyes bored into hers, their slight judgment as piercing as any spoken words. Wayne rushed to her given room and she sat on the cold marble floor. Her back against the door, tears streaming down her face, her mother's words echoed in her head, a relentless dubbing of past. Remember Wayne, a woman's place is in the home. Men want a housewife, not a career woman. Your duty is to keep the house and support your husband. A voice from memory stern and unyielding kept ringing in her memories. These words once a guiding force now seemed like a chain binding her to an outdated ideal. Fine shops grew louder her body shaking with the weight of her mother's expectations and Thayang's rejection. She said to herself whispering through the tears, "How can I make him happy? He doesn't want a housewife. What does he want from me?" Her mind raced searching for answers but finding none the more she thought the more confused she became she was too traditional for Thayan yet too modern for her mother caught between two worlds she felt utterly alone her voice a mix of despair and longing i just wanted to be a good wife to make our home a heaven for him but he sees me as a burden not a partner
She then said her resolve flickering like a candle in the wind. I must try harder, find a way to bridge this gap between us. Her tears were a silent testament to her inner turmoil, each one a drop of the life she had imagined sliding away. Yet, even in her despair, wine spirit held a spark of determination. She would not let this moment define her. She would learn, adapt and strive to understand the enigmatic man she had married off. She murmured a soft promise to herself, I will find my place beside him, somehow. Tomorrow evening before a party. The room was filled with a tense silence broken only by the soft bristles of brushes against skin and the occasional clink of makeup tools. Wayne sat quietly in the chair, her gaze fixed on her own reflection, barely recognizing the women staring back at her. Siyang then said his voice was sharp, cutting through the quiet. More. It need to be more dramatic. She has to stand out. The makeup artist hesitated, her hand pausing mid-air. But sir, isn't this a bit too much? She's already quiet. Siyang interrupted her, his tone icy. I didn't ask for your opinion. I said more. Didn't I? Her current appearance is too mundane. It doesn't match the aura I need her to project tonight. I don't want her dark brown eyes or her natural dark hairs to shine. I want her to have sea like deep blue eyes and blonde hairs. Reluctantly, the makeup artist nodded, reaching for the palette of darker shades. She began to apply a heavier layer of makeup, transforming Wagon's soft features into something bolder, more striking. The makeup artist gathered the courage and asked the question Vagin was afraid to ask, her voice steady. May I ask why you want such change? Thiyang answered without looking at Vagin, his eyes fixed on a distant point. Because she is not just Vagin tonight, she is the wife of Kim Thiyang, the powerful mafia. And she needs to embody the power, that fear that comes with my name. Her current appearance is too gentle, too vulnerable. The makeup artist walked silently, her hands deeply creating the image the young demanded. A blonde wig was placed upon Vaya's head, the color a stark contrast to her natural hue, and blue contact lenses marks the warmth of her eyes. As the transformation completed, Vyan hardly recognized herself. The woman in the mirror was a stranger, one with an imposing presence that felt alien to her gentle nature. She looked at Priyam, searching for a hint of approval or perhaps a silver of the man she hoped was hidden beneath the cold exterior. Thiyang finally met her gaze, his expression unreadable. That's better. Now you are fit to stand beside me. Vaya's heart sank as she realized this was yet another test, another layer added to the fake it she was forced to wear. I will win your heart by my obedience, Thiyang Shi. Vyan had been instructed to attend a silent trophy at Thiang's side. She felt like a doll, dressed up in a pittery that felt alien to her skin. Her hands were cold, her stomach twisted into knots, but she masked her nervousness with a practiced smile she didn't feel.
Gentlemen, meet my wife Kim Wyan. I have pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Kim. We all anticipated whom had this dominant man has married. At one point, the young saint found a hearse under the table, a brief squeeze that was both a warning and a reassurance. She didn't know how to interrupt the gesture, but it sent a shiver down her spine. The young whispered to Vagin, smile and nod, that's all you need to do. As the party dwelt to its final hours, the laughter and music faded into a quiet murmur. The grand hall, once alive with the elite's revelry, now held only a few lingering crescents of crests. Among them were Thayang's cousins, their eyes alight with the thrill of hunt as they circled Vyan. Look at her, so out of place, like a deer surrounded by wolves. Vyan's hands trembled slightly, clasped in her lap. She kept her gaze down, her voice a mere whisper. I am just tired. It's been a long evening. So Min, another cousin of Thayang, remarked mockingly. Tired or just scared? You should be. This world isn't for the weak. You must know, after all, your father was also in Mafia. Very small one, but still, you must be aware of our world. The cousins laughed, their cruel mirth a sharp contrast to Vyan's quiet despire. The young, who stood a short distance away, conversing with an associate, did not turn to look at her. His indifference was a silent dagger. Maybe she is realizing she will never belong. Not really. After all, she isn't really used to seeing this much richness. Vyan felt the sting of her words, each one a reminder of her isolation. She fought the urge to respond to defend herself, but her timidity held her back. Vyan then murmured, her voice barely audible, I belong with Thea, that's enough. With Thea? He doesn't even see you. You are just a shadow of him. The remains of the party lay scattered on the floor of Vine's room. A stark reminder of the evening packet in the corner, Vine sat huddled, her shops muffled by the silence of the room. Her dress, once a symbol of elegance, now lay in the tattered around her, each piece a shred of her shattered composure. She had already got rid of her blonde wig and blue contacts. The door opened with a silent command and the young entered. His presence filled the room, calm yet suffocating, like the eye of the storm. He stood over her, his shadow enveloping her. 
Vain stared halted fear mingling with a sorrow she looked up at him her eyes wide and vulnerable you, your cousins they Tiang then said cutting her off his tone unyielding why do you let them see you weak why do you not fight back Vain flinched the strength of his words striking her deeper than any mockery she then whispered but but how can i do that i am just a woman I need you. I need your protection. Tears welled up in her eyes as she said that Tiang knelt before her. His eyes locked onto hers, a predator ascending its skin. Protection is earned, Vigan. I will not have a liability tied to my name. With those words, he stood and left the room. His departure as silent as his entrance. Vigan was left alone once more. The echo of his words, a chilling knife stab. The room was silent save for the soft partner of rain against the window. Vine sat on the edge of her bed, her father's words echoing in her mind, a relentless tide that eroded her resolve. Remember Vine, a woman's virtue is her quiet grace. Her strength lies in her gentleness, her power in her reserve. She could see him a figure of traditional authority his expectations clear as the lines etched upon his face Your husband will be your shield your voice it is not for you to stand tall but to support to soothe to be the calm in his storm Why his hands clenched the fabric of her dress the material wrinkling under the pressure she had been raised under the weight of this words taught to be the silent partner the porcelain doll on display Do not reach beyond your grasp why and do not aspire to the fire when you are made of the earth be content be compliment be safe The mocking from Thyang's cousins, the indifference in Thyang's eyes, it all seemed to confirm her father's teachings. She was not made for this world of shadows and power plays. She was a timid rabbit among wolves. A tear escaped tracing a path down her cheek. She was not crying for the hurtful words or for Thyang's cold dismissal. She cried for herself, for the life she had been thrust into, for the life she was expected to lead. Is this my fate now to be nothing but a liability her voice a whisper to the empty room She rose moving to the window her reflection a ghostly image in the glass the rain fall harder and mirror to her in a turmoil The night went on and Vine remained at the window her thoughts a tsunami of doubt and fear she was not ready to share the teachings of her father not ready to confront the young not ready to stand up and be seen But at the first light of dawn break through the clouds a new thought took root perhaps she was not ready today but tomorrow she might find a silver of courage and that day after perhaps a bit more For now Vagin would cry she would mourn the loss of her innocence and the crushing weight of her reality but she would also watch she would learn and maybe just maybe she would find a way to reconcile the women she was with the women she needed to be